This world is not what you think it is This world is not what you think it is Go, go Masks everywhere People like zombies I can't see what they're saying I can't read them Society has drifted into a coma A deep sleep What will become of us? All I see is subservience Stay in line Walk this way Wear your mask Do not speak Do not leave your house Or visit your family Stay alert Wash your hands And keep your distance you must comply to these rules and do not step out of line. That was the start of it, but I never thought it could go so far. I've seen the sci-fi films, read it in the Arthur C. Clarke, Philip K. Dick books, but is this actually happening? Is this real? Or is it a simulation? We think we make our choices, we think we make our decisions, but we don't. Decisions are being made for us. It feels like we're being experimented with, tested on, to see what can become of us. Is our level of consciousness being halted or even replaced? Are we being stopped from advancing into the greatest vision of ourselves? The people that rebelled, resisted, or tried to speak were silenced by the masses and were branded as the vermin, the scum, the dirt of society. Anyone who did not comply were taken to outside camps where they were rehabilitated. Then they stayed in line, and no one could think for themselves anymore. People obeyed. The streets became quiet. London was finished, and the only life left were the monoliths being built in the city. People walked the streets in search of happiness. But it was all broken, destroyed annihilated. When the masks were introduced, no one realised where this was leading. We were tricked and silenced. Where do we go from here? Are we just going to be carried along the conveyor belt and slowly suffocated without any second thought, questioning or resistance? All we see now are our four walls and the government dictatorship voicing itself through a screen, telling us how to live our lives every day. Humanity is finished over. Implementing technology into the human body is next on the agenda. Natural evolution has come to an end. There is no choice, and it's the only way forward. Our society has been destroyed, and it will never recover from this oppression. Maybe others know, but haven't spoken yet. Maybe there's alliances forming. Maybe aliens are going to save us. Maybe the world is run by aliens. Am I alien? What am I doing here? Who am I? What is this place? I don't recognize it anymore. The world was never meant to go back to normal. And the word normal never existed anyway. Society is always hidden behind the mask. But now we have the excuse to wear one. What's the future? Our every turn. Our every movement. Our thoughts and actions were monitored and recorded. The Track and Trace app was supposed to help protect us. Contain the virus and monitor its spread. But it forcefully imprisoned us. Millions willingly downloaded it trusting their government's actions, brainwashed and dead inside. People followed like a herd. The app became the perfect dictator-led tool that ran completely on its own, using artificial intelligence and algorithms. The machine that thought for itself was their perfect control device. Mobile phone chips had paved the way for societal surveillance. The app introduced a more sophisticated level of surveillance and it bound us into eternal contract. It entitled private security companies to gain access to data like never before. 
When you downloaded Track and Trace, you started with a simple notification of quarantine if near a carrier. But then it led to certain times that you could go out. Then restrictions on who you could see and who you couldn't see. Some people just couldn't bear it. They went mad, shouting in desperation in the streets. They were swiftly put in the camps set up around London. Many local lockdowns were enforced and travelling on public transport was not possible without your quick response code. Travel was limited to specific places and airports were shut. There was no way to physically interact in the world. A world that I could clearly see would never reform. People could not believe that this was happening and treated it like a bad dream. Something they would awake from in a year or so. During lockdowns, marshals and military were brought in place to monitor the individual quick response codes. The codes manoeuvred society, an AI system that could shape people's lives on a daily basis. More brainwashing leading to cameras installed in everyone's homes and having to answer to the computer for a daily briefing. Track and trace only needed to be programmed by a few. It was all very clean, seamless and eerily convenient. The app was the testbed and the final step before the microchip was introduced. We were warned by the few, but no one listened. It was already being sold as the answer to everyone's problems. Humanity had been hijacked. A dark abyss formed over those years as people became cocooned. But we must realise that we led ourselves into this situation. We lacked the ingenuity and intelligence required to understand its design and reclaim our power. But people simply couldn't find the desire to wake up. They enjoyed being the subservient slave. We were in the belly of the beast. A digitised world with digitised humans within it. Once we had a choice. But now, it was too late. Will we ever remember what it's truly like to be alive? I can't believe what's unfolding. I feel alone. I feel isolated. But I've been awake to this horror. Humanity needs to shift. We've been concealed, stuck in a dream, hiding in the shadows of ourselves. Then we were given the disguise, the surgical cloth covering our face, hiding us from the world. Humans always needed the security, to know we are looked after and cared for. We saw the evil every day, but nobody knew just how dark that force really was. When the lies started to come out, it was already too late. People had fallen asleep, cushioned by their own fear. Society was dead, finished. We were tracked and traced everywhere we went. Cash became dirty and contaminated. The digital economy system was introduced. We were given a number of credits on our ID cards, depending on how essential the work. We had to accept it. We had no choice. Otherwise you were starved, shut out rejected. In a collective paralysis, we were frozen. All our spiritual connection was lost. Loved ones divided, torn and fractured forever. Travel became regulated by governments and only permitted when you had your ID. All our biometrics data and financial movements watched. We had no privacy. We were sovereign to the state. We had a 9 till 5 p.m. curfew. If you broke the rules on the first warning, your ID was taken, and on repeated offences, you were taken to the camps. We all knew that when this happened, you were never seen again. The streets were stripped clean of the homeless. Every human right abolished. Evil fed from the human consciousness that lay dormant under our fear. We exploded. There were breakdowns, chaos, depression, and suicide rates soared. There was no sign of happiness, just nothing left. 
The designers of this reality had stayed hidden in the shadows for too long. We will never see them, only the smoke screen and players on the stage. We have been miseducated, misguided and dragged through the fairground ride of life. Deceived, manipulated and abused. But this is our chance. We have to remember that this is just another existence. A different time, body and place. We've been in a loop and here many times. I don't fear death, as I know there's more. I've got this far on my own, but I feel weak. We can break free. No more chains. We can start the new world. I can't do this on my own. Together, we are stronger. I need you. Will you wake up? It couldn't have been introduced without the people's consent. And it was never about a virus, and deep down everyone knew it. But the fear was too much for people to take action. The tension built. There was some rioting and then the military were brought in. Everybody was vaccinated and forced if not willing. The steps that were taken seemed justified because of the deadly virus. The police state then followed. It was beyond local government. This was full world authoritarian control. After the financial reset and the economic collapse, the digital currency started a new infrastructure of employment. People didn't need to travel, as they could plug into their computers, be wired through chips in their brains and work as data processors for the 6G networks. The physical world had dissolved. Human consciousness had died and the world was at full merging point with AI. The innocent intention of developing microchips to explore the digital world actually became the key enslavement device after the vaccine. People bought into it under the disguise of a perfect world where illnesses were eradicated. But soon, there became no alternative. Without the chip in your brain, you couldn't exist in the system. You couldn't receive credits, so you couldn't work. And if you couldn't work, well, then it was like before. You couldn't eat or have a roof over your head. They monitored the streets for the final few of those who were not microchipped, including me. I kept on the move. But I sometimes wondered if I had nanoparticles in my body preparing me. Maybe it's already been sprayed in the air. Life had entered the most depressing state. Mental illness was at the highest rate it had ever been. Life felt like it was at the end. And it was. The human prison had become visible. And it was too late to do anything now. Then even more complex technologies followed. But humans were docile. They didn't care. Survival was the only ticket. We had over 50,000 satellites above us beaming information into our brains. The chip was sold as freedom, but it was actually instilled to trap our consciousness so we would think like they wanted us to. It worked. It became harder and harder for us to think independently. This is the outcome from a passive society. The years before this happened, there was a way out. But people who woke up were ridiculed and demonized for speaking this truth. No one wanted to believe this could be our fate. The horror that people only dreamed in their nightmares lay down in front of us all, hovering like insects over the monoliths. AI had full world control and the human mind had been connected to the digital hive forever. There was no turning back. As if overnight, the bad dystopian dream had become a reality. Now we are here, on the edge, with the smallest chance to turn this all around, to rewrite the script, to make a different choice. We have asked enough questions and we know the answers. We know what we must do. Will you listen? Can the human race unite and make this happen? Who could have blamed this power to take full control? Humans had lost their own vision, given it away, sleepwalked into it and followed in herds. Sit down, stand up, two plus two equals five. They were laughing and had us exactly where they wanted us, like rats in a cage. Everyone was affected, no matter how rich or poor. There was simply no escape. The police state is upon us now. 
What life will you choose? The Great Reset had to happen, and the human mind couldn't interfere with their plans. The human mind had to be suppressed. People were thinking for themselves. They didn't need bombs or chemicals. They understood that the most powerful weapon was fear. It ate at the human condition, like caged rats around our heads. Our thoughts just rotted, decayed, until the old world had just become a part of our imaginations. By dismantling the core of society, they divided us, making people fight with one another. It allowed this to become a psychological war amongst the people. The virus collapsed the economy, allowing the New World Credit System to be introduced. National governments formed to become a one-world government and religion became illegal. No one could pay their mortgages. Property became government-owned. You stayed in line or you were hunted down like a witch. Police were given 100% power and the city's empty offices became the workstations for the fascist state. The collection of data and monitoring human behaviour became the stable economy. No one could understand why and how this happened. But that was part of the plan. Keeping people disorientated, kept them asleep and holding on to the system. The lockdowns had mentally worn people down, broken their minds and true understanding of reality. They needed the virus only to accelerate the changes that they were already making. It was the perfect smokescreen to bring about their new world order which they had been working on for decades. Human evolution needed to be reversed. They had used and abused us enough to construct the artificial reality they desired. There was no use for us anymore. Unless we merged with their machine and followed their path to destruction, we were useless. The number one objective of the reset was depopulation. Humans were over exceeding resources. Carbon emissions had to stop to allow certain technologies to be introduced. But it was also a resetting of the mind, individually and collectively. They pulled us through everlasting satanic rituals to give us human trauma, allowing them to steer evolution as they wished. Mental illness had become like the common cold, and by this point, the virus had been forgotten. We were told there was a return to normal, but we were put deeper under their spell. No resistance gave the permission to oppress and do as they liked, but it was only the people's blindness that led them into their trap. But people still could not face the truth, and by not facing the truth, they created a shadow when that shadow filled the light, the darkness became so dense, people were blind. We became frozen and led like lambs to the slaughter. We are spiritual beings experiencing a physical reality, but we trapped ourselves in someone else's dream. The dream seems real, but we do have the ability to change it at any time. Dictatorships only exist with followers. You don't have to go with the obedient herd. There is another choice. Are you scared to be an individual? Or are you happy being the submissive slave? I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. <laughs>